Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. The U.S. Uh, economic onslaught, economic warfare in the form of uh, sanctions uh, are um, better stage. This is now the process called, normally called a secondary boycott. The U.S. says, we will not deal with Iran, we will not deal with the Iranian Central Bank, and anybody who does deal with the Iranian Central Bank, we will not allow them to operate in the United States. So if you're a bank in Europe or in Japan, if you deal with the Iranian Central Bank, you are being kicked out of the U.S. market. The question is, does the U.S. have enough power to make this stick economically or enough arm-twisting political power to make it happen? And that is uh, up in the air. The uh, visit of Geithner in the Far East was designed to uh, essentially intimidate and bludgeon the uh, Chinese, Japanese, Koreans, Indians, and so forth uh, to follow these U.S sanctions. And, uh, of course, the Chinese have said, at least in public, a no. We'll get back to them in a minute. India has said no. Uh, Japan uh, waffling. Uh, Prime Minister Noda says he will ask the business community, right, the Kaidanren or whatever it is, and uh, Korea possibly a likely uh, yes. Uh, Let's just look into this this Chinese case. The U.S. has sanctioned a Chinese firm called the Zhuhai Zhenrong, uh, which has been hit by the U.S. with sanctions for selling oil products to Iran. So um, the Chinese very angry about this. We have here uh, China Daily of Thursday, January 19th, and we have Vice Prime Minister Li uh, Li Kenjiang, the Li 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 Kenchang, and he says uh, unilateral sanctions by Western countries do not have the nature of international law. The foreign ministry has voiced strong dissatisfaction and firm opposition to the U.S. sanctions imposed on the Chinese state-run Zhuhai Zhenrong Company. We firmly oppose the high-handed practice of some countries to harm others, other countries' interests through unilateral sanctions. Uh, we do not want the normal cooperation between China and Iran, which does not involve the nuclear issue, to be affected by this. Many countries have this same concern. And then Lee goes on to say, military action would have disastrous effects on the peace and stability of the Middle East. Once a war takes place in the region, not only will countries be affected and impacted, but world energy security and world economy will suffer a deadly blow. Now, this, the occasion for this is that a bunch of uh, U.S. has-beens, uh, Kissinger, Schultz, Rubin, and Mullen are over there. This is called the China-U.S. Track 2 High-Level Dialogue, which is a bunch of these wheel horses from the, uh, from the U.S. establishment. So Chinese um, showing something. Now, of course, the, the countervailing thing is, uh, in, with inscrutability, Looks like China is diversifying away from Iranian purchases, and uh, that we'll have to see. Uh, The buyers of Iran's oil, China buys 20% of Iran's oil. Japan buys 17% of Iran's oil. India buys 16%. Italy buys 10%. Um, Korea buys 9%, and the rest of the world 28%. And what we're seeing, among other things, is the need for that overland pipeline from Iran into Pakistan Energy Corridor Pipeline Stand, up over the Himalayas, above Kashmir, and into China. That would solve a lot of this. So the idea is uh, Iran hit hard with these uh, sanctions. Is this enough to, uh, to cause serious problems? And above all, is it enough to con the Iranians, really? That's the only word for it, to, to goad, con, and provoke the Iranians into trying to close the Straits of Hormuz, which, again, militarily they can do with mines and so forth. Uh, Tanker traffic would stop. But this would, of course, be then the way that the U.S. would line up all of these other countries in a front hostile to Iran to attack Iran. Uh, Prince Turkey of Saudi Arabia says that if Iran gets a nuclear weapon, then the Saudis will need nukes, too. And this is supposed to be uh, also a disaster Let me say, I would call on Ron Paul, uh, because of his um, statements in favor of um, peaceful solution to these problems, and if he has uh, his uh, anti-war 
um, stance in the uh, Republican uh, presidential debates, fine. If this is serious, I call on Ron Paul to immediately deposit articles of impeachment against Obama. And you can do it on the economic warfare against Iran, acts of war against Pakistan, against Iran, and the, uh, the question of the unlimited detention and related uh, questions. Uh, we've had many candidates, like Obama, running on a peace platform that then got some degree of power and then gave us something different. If Ron Paul wants to be serious, he could deposit articles of impeachment. That would get a lot of attention right now. This may, we may be at the apex today. This is to say uh, Friday, January 20th. We're the day before the South Carolina primary. It's likely that Ron Paul's vote totals will now fall below the 20 to 22 percent area that he had been in, get down more like the 10 or 12 percent level, uh, guessing from the polls. Uh, He's now at the height of his ability to get attention for this issue. So I remember when Henry Gonzalez of Texas, uh, a real populist in the uh, Wright-Patman tradition, when uh, Henry Gonzalez deposited articles of impeachment against Bush the Elder, uh, I made sure that Henry Gonzalez got the first copy off the press of the uh, unauthorized biography of George Bush the Elder, delivered it personally to his office back in, uh, in 1992. Anyway... Ron Paul could certainly get some attention uh, by, by doing something. He's the only candidate who's a member of the House of Representatives. He's the only one who has easy access to the question of impeachment. So let him do it. And I'm not going to listen to people saying, oh, no, he can't because he's trying to win the election. Forget winning the election. He won't win the election. Uh, and indeed, the only way to win the election as a long shot is if you stir the pot and kick over the board and, uh, and go for something like this. This is not for Ron Paul that I make this argument. I told Kucinich the same thing and, uh, and also others. But now let's look at the, um, at the uh, situation here. Uh, notice that the, uh, the urination video uh, has occurred during the time that General Mad Dog Mathis is the commander of the U.S. Central Command. This is the guy who said it's fun to shoot people. This Afghanistan obscenity occurs on his watch. But now, the pattern of U.S. behavior towards Iran. I'm counting nine hostile, warlike, or provocative uh, actions, and this this really does add up. Uh, First of all, the presence of U.S. troops in Iraq on one border of Iran, the presence, the, the fighting of a war in Afghanistan and in Pakistan on the other border of uh, Iran. Uh, We've also got U.S. Navy ships building up in the Gulf as well as in the Arabian Sea. Uh, I believe three carrier battle groups now on their way uh, to that uh, area. The Carl Vinson in the Arabian Sea, the Abraham Lincoln, and the Stennis all there. The George Bush has uh, left the area, the George Bush. So war on... Both, both western and eastern sides of Iraq, U.S. Navy ships in the Gulf and the Arabian Sea. The U.S. has a base in Kuwait, base in Saudi Arabia. Uh, increased troops, 15,000 more in Kuwait at the present time. Economic sanctions, including the secondary boycott. The drones, constant uh, surveillance by spy drones, and they have the ability also to kill people, drop bombs, and God knows what. Maybe they have mini Many cruise missiles that have something to do with these ex- explosions or smart bombs, these smaller missiles, could be the key to what's gone on at these Iranian uh, scientific research and nuclear sites. We've had cyber warfare, the Stuxnet, and everything that goes with that. U.S. sponsorship of terror groups, the Jandala, the Rigi organization on the Pakistan border side, the Akhvaz or Arabistan Liberation Front. Take the ethnic minorities, the Azeris, the Kurds, the Turkmen the Arabs, and the Baluchis. U.S. has got a terrorist liberation front going in each one of those. The assassinations of scientists, right, loudly proclaimed by the Republican candidates, and, again, these bombs at scientific facilities and uh, related stuff. So nine hostile actions, and uh, the U.S. claims that Iran is threatening the United States or Israel. It's ridiculous. Back in a minute. 